My name is Pam Marriott, and this is my colleague Janice Leach. And we've sort of divided up this presentation into two parts. I'm going to do the first few slides and pass over to my colleague Janice um, today. But hands up for those people who've been into the main presentation. I'm not sure whether I can actually live up to, to Jeff Brown's presentation. No, we can. We can. Oh, I'm not sure because I was listening. Very good. But apologies if you don't, but uh, we'll get on with today's uh, presentation. Okay, Janice and I actually work for the business education and support team, and part of our role is to actually go out and meet our customers and educate them in various um, different topics. Janice really specialises in the VAT side of life, and I um, have gone on to do things for online services. So promoting um, health assessments for online, etc. Page you earn online. So after today's <coughs> session, if you do have questions, we're very happy to take them. And I don't think there's anybody in this room afterwards, so we can either stay in here or go through into the lounge area if you've got sort of topics or questions you want to ask us. Don't ask me anything about EC sales list, please. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Janice on this one. <laughs> Yeah, Janice was very busy after yesterday, so I'm very relieved it wasn't me. Okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about corporation tax online and the changes that are going to happen. VAT online <coughs> is something that has already happened for quite a few of our traders. Um, VAT cross-border changes, Janice will take over on VAT rate changes. There's a little bit about payroll updates. And then finally, where you can all get help, support, and advice from, as well as today. So, <clears throat> doing it online. Some time ago, you might or might not be aware, but the government actually commissioned Lord Cartridge Coles, <coughs> excuse me, to look at the look at the uptake of our online services. And a report was published alongside the budget for 2006 giving the government 29 recommendations um, how to increase the uptake of the online services. You will be relieved, we're not going to talk about all 29 recommendations, just a couple um, today, especially at the beginning, that we can I'll talk to you about. Um, but if you are interested, the report is actually published on the website and it's there. But for those of you who are in business, which I'm assuming for the majority of the audience, I think you'll already be aware of some of the recommendations that have actually taken place. Okay. Right, the key dates for corporation tax, um, April, 1st of April um, 2011, you will be expected to file all company tax returns um, with accounting periods ending after the 31st of March online. Um, the only exceptions, dare I say, are there's only two those companies who, whose directors and company secretaries are all practicing members of a religious society or order whose belief is incompatible to the use of electronic methods of communication. If that affects anybody within here, then you do need to write to your corporation tax office and explain the situation to them and then make a decision. The other exemption is if the company is subject to a formal winding up order or insolvency proceedings. So basically, everybody else will have to comply to this rule from 1st of April 2011. The second bullet point is where the account computations have to come to us in a specific data format, which is called XCRL. If you're using um, commercial software, the companies will already, if not have sorted it, will be sorted and really it's nothing for the actual end user to worry too much about because the companies that you choose to use software with will already have covered that. Um, and it's something that is hidden behind the scenes, so don't worry too much about it. And the electronic payments, I do, there's another slide a little bit later on. Don't get hung up about what we call electronic payments. Um, I'll show you what we mean. So what does it actually allow you to do? Um, corporation tax allows you online to file the um, return online. 
including the accounts and consultations, and you can attach it as a document to the return online. Something that is good when you sign up for it, whether you, whether you file a return now or not, is you've got access to your online accounts with Revenue and Customs. So you've got access to the amounts that have been paid over previously, whether we charge interest and unfortunate penalties, you can actually see that online, um, and payments, repayments made, etc. So you get to see what our staff will see, which I think is quite a good thing. I mean, this has been going on for quite some time, and whilst April next year is quite a few months away, it doesn't preclude you now from actually enrolling into the CP online um, to actually see and get used to the, the pages, etc. We do have demonstrator, Revenue and Customs have a demonstrator um, through our website that you can actually go on and view the different heads of duty with regards to filing online. You can't break it. It's nothing that you, you can't sort of put something on and it will crash or anything. It's just a um, copy of the page and you can actually see before you um, before you actually go ahead and do it. Is that what I tried to call I didn't dare say that. <laughs> Um, some time ago, Revenue and Customs, I think it was June 2007, um, gave the facility for corporation tax to actually send to us the nil declarations online, and that's been there for quite a long time. And also, you can actually change some contract details online as well. So instead of having to write in and say um, the communication address of the company is now changed, you can do that online. I think that's quite a good thing as well, because it is more or less. And mainly this is to assist the smaller companies with less complex, complex affairs. We've, we've introduced the, um, the corporation tax online and it's based on the short CT600. We only support three supplementary pages on this, um, on this service, uh, which is A, which is the loans to participators by closed companies, E, charities and community amateur sports clubs, and J, disclosure of tax um, avoidance schemes. If your company obviously needs more than this, then you will need to obviously sort out um, proprietary software. Um, and HMRC does actually produce lists of companies um, who supply corporation tax software if you need more complex affairs or whether you just choose to use um, commercial software. Moving on, just to give you a little bit of an explanation to the um, XPRL, it um, stands for Extensible Business Reporting Language. It's actually been around for quite some time, um, but it's just a very quick explanation. It puts on what we call like an electronic tag um, onto each piece of information, whether it's text or numbers within the document. And I think the, the last bullet point is, is good, a good um, explanation. It's just like that. But because really the end user doesn't need to know that much about it, I wouldn't get too hung up about what it actually means uh, because it will just be there. And then finally, um, just to sort of uh, give a bit more of a description, when you send a document into Revenue and Customs using XBRL, it, it allows it to be read both by us, and it does say humans down there. Accidents <laughs> better. If you can read it. <laughs> yes, that's true. <laughs> and also readable by the actual computer. So if there's any analysis, etc., it can uh, report certain parts of the information to it. Um, there is an actual website for XBRL, and if you are interested, it's probably worth it to have a look if you are wanting to know a bit more information about it. Um, so it's just a very, very quick explanation. Moving on, um, away from 